but right now, Elijah Hawila, he is a Muslim. He masqueraded as a Jew, and we'll find out why, what it's all about. He married a Syrian Jewish girl, and then they, then he, the Tanom was in August. They got married a few weeks ago, and then they discovered that he wasn't Jewish, and that will led to the story where we had an NYPD Richard Taylor who said that the police department and the FBI vetted him. They found that there was no terrorist connection, but yet there's still some ruffled feathers in the community, and he's here to tell his story as well. So, Elijah Hawila, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Zev. Um, so, tell us, so you were born in Lebanon, correct? Yes. Okay. And you're, you're, th this is a different name that you had when you lived in that country. <coughs> is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, I believe you had, had a name, Ali Hassan. So, growing up, did you... Hassan was my middle name. Was actually. your middle name. Okay. Now, you grew up, you were Shiite, were you religious Muslim? How, what was your family like in, in Lebanon? So, I grew up, I was born to parents who were born to Muslim Shia families, but personally, just me, I never affiliated with the religion of Islam. I never been a practicing Muslim. I don't believe in Islam. It's... So when you refer to me as a Muslim, that's not actually who I am. I don't identify as it. I was true. I was born to Muslim parents, non-practicing. Uh, dad only prays, fasts, but ma my mother does not practice Islam. She does not practice any religion. She's religious-less. I, I wouldn't say an atheist, but I would say, you know, you know close to it. <clears throat> but I am not a practicing Muslim. I don't believe in Islam, and, I, it's, and it's not my religion. Did you have any, I, any, obviously there are very few Jews, I don't think there are any Jews in Lebanon today. Did you know anything about Jews, about Israel growing up? <clears throat> so growing up, um, that's what they taught in schools in Lebanon, that, you know, Israel is the enemy of Lebanon. You know, uh, you should not talk to Israelis. You should not talk to Jews, you know, things like that. But Personally, I was disconnected from politics all my life. You know, just recently, over the past, I would say, seven, eight years, I started following politics. I'm, tw I'm all of 23 years old. Um, so this is the vibe that I grew up around. My parents were not necessarily, you know, around that vibe. They didn't believe that uh, in, in all the things that those people said, you know, anti-Semitism and things like that. But there was no, I would say I grew up around a non-religious home, technically a non-religious home. Um, so I had spiritual emptiness growing up and my parents didn't have a nice relationship. They've never, they've never ever had a happy, healthy relationship. They're now separated. That's why my dad is in Lebanon, because he refuses to give her a divorce. And there's lots of issues related to that. So that's why he's there. My mom lives in Texas with my younger brother. So growing up, I never clicked with people. I didn't, I didn't feel like I fit within the Lebanese culture. I didn't feel like I... Like my, like the, the way I take life, my lifestyle, the way I approach people, the way I talk to people is just very different. So I suffered a lot with communicating with people, just being able to resonate on a similar intellectual level. And around junior year of high school, I started realizing, oh my gosh, college is approaching and I'm in a country that provides no opportunities for anybody. And I, I, I have no future here. So I started begging my dad because he was a U.S. citizen. I said, please go to America, uh, establish something there so that me, me, me and my mom and my brother could go and I could go to college and I could study something that I like. I was interested in aerospace engineering and astronomy and computer programming. So this is, this is, this, this is who I am. I've always been a nerd. And after a while of begging, uh, my dad agreed and he flew to America early 2014. And he started the process of getting us visas to, to come to America. <clears throat> Around mid-junior year, which is mid mid uh, 24, early to mid-2014, I started, I took, some people came to, to, came to school and started talking about, you know, religions, world religions. We had a class in history about it. And that was a, was that like, was a school in Lebanon, right? 
Yes, that, that was the high school. Now, just, so just, I was just like, confirm okay. with me, was this was, did you live, according to the Long Island, well, to the Five Towns Jewish Times, did you live in a Palestinian refugee camp, Burj El Shamali? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's, 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 called, it's called Burj Shamali, which means the North Tower. It's a town, but it's not a refugee camp. The, the, the people, actually, people in Lebanon, just so you know, there's a lot of racism against Palestinians in Lebanon. In Israel, you don't find racism against Palestinians, but in Lebanon, there is racism. So we were distant from any Palestinians. So, but you were near the, you, so you were near the refugee camp, but you weren't in it. I was not near. So it was in a city that was close to the town where, town where I lived. But I've I've never affiliated with Palestinians. I'm not Palestinian. I'm not. So I don't even. Yet, I've never had Palestinian friends ever. Okay. So, so, so go back. So you're 2014, and what happens? So 2014, mid year of high school. I, the people came to my school, and we had a we had a beautiful conference about you know religions, world religions. They start, They said, uh, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism etc whatever it is and i was like screw it let me explore religions i i have spiritual emptiness i've never felt like i belong in uh, the religion of islam which i grew up around there were there were there were even christians living close to me i i had christian friends christian and muslim friends in the city where i live so i said i'm gonna start exploring religions so i started i looked at islam a little bit i didn't like it it's not for me. It's it, it doesn't. It, it, I didn't feel any connection. It just didn't click into my heart. I. Not for me. Not the word of God. If there is a God, this is not the word of God. And then I started. Were you required to go to mosque or you to to pray? No, no, no. I I did. I never. I've never stepped into a mosque. In ever. Lebanon, you never stepped into a mosque. I've never stepped into a mosque. I was actually mocked by my friends. And I, I, I was the joke of the group of my friends that, oh, who is this guy? He doesn't go to mosques. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. You know, I never felt like I wanted to do it ever. It's not for me. But your father, the did, way your they father pray, did celebrate but, some of the Muslim holiday. He, yes. didn't, he didn't require yes. you to go to mosque? So it didn't require me to go to mosque. They did celebrate holidays. Uh, there, was, there was the month of Ramadan where they fasted. Uh, even they wanted me to fast, but I didn't want to. I, I'm like, leave me alone. I don't want to fast. I don't want to uh, starve myself for 30 days. It's not for me, right? But the pressure, the, the pressure you feel in a community is really harsh, right? So if I had been forced to fast a few times, but that was about it. I even was forced by my dad. He said, come here. I, I want to teach you prayers because, you know, all your friends pray and things like that. So, and you don't, I'm like, I don't, don't want it. It's not for me. And even he used to mock me. He used to tell my mom, "You're you're 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 my wife, and you're bringing shame to me. You don't pray. You don't uh, you don't put a hijab on." My mom never ever believed in fundamentally, never ever believed in Islam. Okay, right? so so at some point you came to the United States. What year was that? Before I got, now, yeah. I want to tell my story. But before I came to the United States, my story started in Lebanon when I started exploring religions. I explored I explored Islam a little bit. Not for me, not the word of God. I explored, I explored Christianity. And then I got to explore Judaism. I literally, the first thing I did was I Googled Jewish Bible. And I got, a, I got uh, an app called Torah Pocket. It's uh, Torah, Parashot. I downloaded it and I started reading it. And it, it just clicked. It clicked. It, it, it felt like it's for me. Bereshit and Exodus and all of this, it 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 felt it felt right. I, I the, the story the story of Adam and Chava and Moshe Rabbeinu and Yosef and Yaakov Avinu and Abraham Avinu. It just it it felt right. It felt it felt deep into my heart. So I said, you know what? This is beautiful. I want it. I uh, I like it. So I started Googling Jewish prayers. I started Googling Jewish laws. I downloaded a PDF Gemara that I started reading. You know what? This is beautiful. Rabbi, rabbis arguing with each other to reach the truth, to reach it's 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 something really right. This this is this is how you reach truth. This is how you know that this is the word of God. When you use your intellect, it's not through your heart or through your emotions or through anything. The, the, the Torah says you don't have to believe. The Torah says you have to know, and that really clicked in me. And I start I, I started looking up Jewish prayers. I downloaded the filot PDFs. 
I said, oh my gosh, this is, this is beautiful. You, you wake up in the morning and you thank Hashem and you wash your hands and you do this and you do that. This is, this is amazing to me. This is, you, when, when you download some, sorry, when you pray and with your prayers, you feel not just like you're speaking to God, but you're actually elevating everything around you. Every word that you say, every Hebrew letter that you say. I wasn't praying in Hebrew for, at first because I didn't know how to speak Hebrew, but I was praying in English. So I started teaching myself Hebrew. I started in, I Lebanon, in it. Lebanon. You were teaching yourself in Hebrew? Lebanon. In Lebanon, I started teaching myself Hebrew. And what did your, your parents started, say? What did your parents say to that? At this point, it was all hidden. I mm -hmm. no one noticed anything. Okay. I started learning Hebrew letters. I started teaching myself how to read, how to put, how to put letters together, like the word uh, Aleph and then uh, Bet next to it. So Ab, so Abba. You say my my uh, Abba, my my, my father. It was beautiful. So I started reading Hebrew. I, I, I started reading actual prayers and actual text. I was not still a little sloppy, but I tried my best. I've always been trying my best. So what happened? So here you and go. Then, so, you, so you end up coming to. I'm so, just, so you started coming so here, to the United States so at some point. This 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 is before me coming to the United States. So he, so here's me exploring this new religion, falling in love with it, feeling connected, feeling that finally I have some spirituality. So I made my own kippah. I literally made my own kippah from cardboard and cloth and threads that my grandma used to. I, 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 I sued it. I made it by myself and I started putting it on in the morning and praying and coming and later, later. I mean, it was always hard for me to pray in the morning because you have to wake up and go to school and then come back. But around mincha time, that, that, was, that was easier for me. Why do so you have people, to make a yam? Why do you have to make a kippah? Can you use a Muslim? The Muslim prayer caps are very simple. No, no. I, I wanted to make my I didn't want to use anything that they do. I don't affiliate with them. I don't feel comfortable. I don't this I don't fit. I don't fit. So I made my own kippah. It was small. And I, I they took it away from me at some point, but my mom started. Who, who took it she away? Started, from, who took it away from you? My mom. Oh your mother. Okay. My mom took it away from me at some point, and I'll get to that part of the story. So my mom started noticing. What are you doing? I said, Mom, I'm learning Hebrew. She's like, Oh my gosh, no, this is dangerous. This is this. This is, you, you're gonna get us in trouble. My mom was not against Israel or anything, but she was just scared, knowing you know that we live in a in a in a, in a community that has Muslims, and there's Christians around us who are also you know not into dealing with Israel. So she, my mom got scared. She said, I don't want to go to jail. She said, uh, she said, I, I want to travel and I want to go with you to America and I want to have a, but I don't want to go to jail. So don't get me in trouble. But I didn't, I didn't stop. I don't care. I kept praying and I kept learning and I, and I started coming out to people, uh, pe to people as I want to become Jewish. You know, I, I don't believe in your religion. I even started having debates with people about why Judaism is the word of God, why Eretz Israel belongs to Am Israel, why Hashem said, you know, this, this should happen. I started coming out of the box and telling people I have a Jewish soul and I, I consider myself Jewish and I want to be Jewish. People then started spitting on me in the street. I used to walk on the street and be spit on. People started texting me on WhatsApp from random numbers, giving me death threats, saying, if you don't stop this, we're going to come to your house and we're going to kill you. One guy actually texted me, said, oh, my God, if you don't if you don't stop, we're going to hack your bank account. And I said to myself, I don't even have a bank account. Like, what are you talking about? But in the interest of brevity, I'm just trying to move the story along. So you decided that you like Judaism while you were still in Lebanon. What you did, how many years ago did you come to the United States? This was a year and a half, about a year, about a year, year and a half before I came to the United States. And my dad, my dad figured out what was going on. My mom told my dad, you know, your son is doing this and people are starting to notice and they're sending him death threats. He said, throw him out of the house for two days, but let him sleep on the stairs so that he learns to stop to do this. Because if he doesn't, I'm not bringing him to America. And he threatened me. He said, if you do not stop what you're doing, you're bringing shame to me and shame to your uncles and shame to everybody. And shame to the community. You need to stop. Otherwise, I'm not bringing you here. You're never going to have a future in America. So I laid low. I stopped. I laid low a little bit. I kept reading by myself online. I kept teaching myself Hebrew, learning Hebrew words. So and what, then time passed. So what and I graduated you, from... You graduated in high school in, 
I gra- the year 2015. 2015. And those pictures that you saw online of me, those people with me in the picture, th- those were not my family. These were not family members. Those were people from the district where in my where my high school was located and they came to give me an award because I had I had a really high grade. I was I graduated valedictorian in Lebanon from my high school and I had the highest grade in the district and one of the highest grades in the country. So, here so they you came are, to give coming, me an award. So here you are you're coming to the United States and what yes. happens then? You First week first week when I come to the US. You know, finally I'm here in a country that accepts freedom of religion freedom of speech freedom of everything and so, obviously you learned english in lebanon so you were able to yes learn. yes my my, my well, i i speak really good english and i write really good english so i get to the united states first week in in houston around the westheimer road area close to the galleria galleria mall so i started googling synagogues in my area i want to connect with jews i connect with the community i want to go pray with them i want to go get to convert i i want to i, I want to be jewish that's i i i can't i i couldn't wait just just to do this just to come to america to do this and to go to college at that so did, point did you reach out to, to any rabbis to try to help you convert did you try that so route? not rabbis not rabbis because i don't know anybody so not individuals but i reached out to a shul in houston a reform shul I called them. They didn't twice, three times. They didn't respond. So I sent them an email. I still have that email on me. I'll send you off the air. I'll send you a screenshot of that email. I said, hi, I'm here and I want to convert to Judaism. Can you please help me? No one responded. I called again and again and again. And then someone responded and said, we'll send you the details of an event to come meet with our rabbi here so that you could talk to him. And then they never sent me anything. And I kept calling them and I kept begging them and begging and, and asking. They just ghosted me. So I said, you know what? I'm being rejected because of my background. I'm being rejected because I came from Lebanon. What am I going to do to belong? What, I, 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 if, if I'm not being accepted, what am I going to do? I'm just going to keep keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to practice what I'm practicing, what I believe in. So and I'm going to say I'm Jewish. So at some point you said, okay, I'm not getting help from the Reformed Jewish congregation. I'm going to tell people I'm Jewish. What point was that? Because This was you, around... Go ahead, yeah. This was around November, October, October, November 2015. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I can't. You know, I, I feel like, you know, at the, it's, a, it's a mix of emotions that I'm being rejected, right? And if, I, if I'm being rejected, I'm never going to get accepted. And I didn't know any better. I really did not know any better. Okay, I so, only, I knew- so here you are. So you didn't know any better. So you, you started telling people you were Jewish. Did you start going to shuls? Did you start going I, to events? I, I didn't start going to shuls because the shul was a little far and I didn't own a car and my dad was work, working all day and my mom didn't have a car. But what I did was I took the metro bus. I used to take the metro bus for two things. Number one, I used to take it from Westheimer and Dunville to Westheimer and Fondren, then walk for 45 minutes to go eat by, by Saba's restaurant in Houston, which was a kosher restaurant because there was a lot of Jews and I wanted to eat kosher. I wanted to keep, I didn't, I, of course I couldn't, I couldn't always do it. But whenever I had money on me, which, and I didn't get all the financial support from my parents, I saved money to go take the bus and go eat by Sabas, which is a very, which is pretty expensive. Kosher food is always So where do you get the money from? Just from scholarships. Oh, from, from college. scholarships, okay. So I, I had, a, I had, I was in the honors program by Lone Star College North Harris. So I got a really good scholarship. And some grants from the government. Um, I became a U.S. citizen November, I, I th- around late November. I became okay. a U.S. citizen. So you became a U.S. citizen. And at what point did you start hanging out more with the Jewish community? So I started taking the bus to the Galleria Mall because there were lots of Israeli workers in the Galleria Mall. I used to just go schmooze around with them like, oh, my gosh, finally, Jews, Israelis. I love Israel. You know, finally, I'm belonging. I'm meeting, I'm meeting people that, I, you know, I'm, I'm clicking with them. There was this girl named Anita. He, she, she, used, she used to work by one of the kiosks in the Galleria. I told her, oh my gosh, Mashiach will come and we will rebuild the Beit HaMikdash. She, tra- she tried to give me a hug, but I mean, I don't touch. You know, I just didn't feel comfortable. She tried to give me a hug. She said, you're amazing. You know, come here. We'll they, tra- they tried to sell me some stuff, of course. But I mean, I wasn't interested in buying. I, w- I, I really just went to the gallery to schmooze around with Israeli workers. I, 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 these, these, these are the people I, I long to speak with. 
So I started here, asking so about start, Israel. So you started doing that. So at, now this is about 2015, 2016, you're saying? 2016. So at, now let's just move up a little bit more. So at some point you met the Chabad rabbi in uh, Texas? Yes. So I kept doing what I'm doing, and we moved We moved from Houston to Katy. And then in Katy, I, I moved to Lone Star College, Saifair, where I kept identifying, you know, I'm Jewish. I'm, I'm Jewish. This is who I am. This is who I want to be. I even at some point started, tried starting a Jewish club in Lone Star College, Saifair, but there were there was just no Jewish students there. So you, But so you can't, at some out. point, you made contact with Rabbi Yossi Lazaro, yes. who we did try so contact I, for tonight's broadcast, but we did, were not, unable to get a hold of him. But go ahead, yes. So that is the Chabad rabbi. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So around around the time, a semester before I graduated from Lone Star College, I started applying to multiple colleges, and I got accepted to really some high ranking colleges. But Texas A and M University gave me a good scholarship, so I accepted Texas A and M University, and then I transferred there. And then during the new student conference at Texas A and M University, I went to the Hillel House. Because I Googled, I said, you know, it's Texas A&M, it's a big university, so there must be a lot of Jewish students there. There must be a Jewish community. So I went to the Hillel house, and in the Hillel house, they asked me, oh, you're Jewish? I said, you know what? Yes, I am. If I tell them I'm not, I'm going to be thrown out. I'm, I, I, I was scared. I was scared of not. I was scared of being thrown out of that. Thrown out of that place. I wanted to make Jewish friends, and I wanted to pray Jewish, and I wanted, I wanted to eat kosher food. And then when the semester started, I went again. And then I got to know the Chabad house. A friend of mine who, they at this point, I was telling them I'm Jewish. And they were asking me details about family. So I, I said, you know what? If, if I tell them the truth, they're not going to accept me. They're not, no, no, one, no one's going to like me. So let me just tell them I'm Jewish. And this is my name. And this is my mom's name. And this is my grandma's name. And then when I went to the Chabad house, first time I met Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi, he said, is your mom Jewish? And I thought to myself quickly, I said, if I tell him no, I'm not going to be allowed to pray here. I'm not going to be allowed to come here. I didn't know any better. They're, they're the most, they're the sweetest people. The Chabad house in Texas A&M, they're the sweetest people on earth. So, I, you, I didn't so, know that. so you told them that you were Jewish? I told them that I was Jewish and I started going there and I started praying and I got to know one of my one of the dearest friends to my heart. He's a physicist. He, he worked at Los, at Los Alamos. He's a genius. Very big tzaddik, very, very hashuv person. I got to know him and I told him I'm Jewish. And he started, he, every time he saw me, Elia, you want to learn Gemara? You want to learn Gemara? So I started, I, I said, yes, I want to learn with you. So I started learning and I started making more and more friends. And finally, I'm living the life that I wanted. I'm praying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shul. I'm praying. I wasn't always praying because, of course, there's college. And, of course, you know, still those mixed emotions of, yes, I consider myself Jewish. So they, so, they, know, so they thought you were Jewish and they were accepting of you because you said you were Jewish. Yes. But at that point, when I, when I saw that they were accepting, you know, even, even to other people, I, I started seeing other people who are not Jewish who were coming in. And one of my one of my closest friends, uh, he's now converting. They accepted him and they they actually pushed him towards conversion. I said, "What did I do to myself?" But you know what? I I I, I was I was I was being tortured from the inside that I was that I wasn't telling the truth. But I want I wanted to tell the truth, but I was afraid of losing Rabbi. I was afraid of losing my friends, the dearest friends to my heart, the people who gave me support, the people the people who literally just took me as a brother to them. So you kept going and saying you're. You're Jewish. At some point, you contacted the Jewish dating site, saw you at Sinai, correct? Before, before, before that, because I don't want to skip details because every detail in my story counts. So. No, but, but an interest in brevity because we're going to break and we're going to take some phone calls too. So, so I, I kept going and I kept trying to become more religious. It was a struggle. I, I tried to keep Shabbat. In Lebanon, I, I used to try to keep Shabbat. I used to sometimes turn off my phone. And when I got to Texas A&M, I used to go to the Shabbat meals and both at both the Hillel house and the Chabad house, and they all treated me well. The rabbi of the Chabad house in that Texas universe in Texas A&M University is one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life, and he has a good heart. And it pains me that I lied to him. It pains me, but he has a good heart, and not and no one should point fingers at him. No one, point fingers at me. But while you point fingers at me, understand where my pain is coming from. 
so, so I started going there, and I, I, I never, I never ever wanted to date a non-Jewish girl. I never. I, I, I wanted to date Jewish. So I started, you know, I, 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 I dated a girl from Texas A and M University who was Jewish. Didn't work out. And then when Corona happened, I dated another. I dated another girl online from Canada. Didn't work out. And I kept it. it the, my, my lie, my initial lie, kept spiraling. So every time I had to say something new, I had to come up with something. I don't want to lose my friends. I do, I do, do those, those are, those are the people who make me who I want to be. I don't want to lose them. So at some point, my, the dear friend of mine that I told you about, the, the physicist, he said, why don't you try to you at Sinai? I said, which, which, which is the dating website that I uh, used where I met the girl. And so we're not going to mention her name because we're going to protect the. I'm family. not going to mention her name. I'm it's, not going to mention her name. And I just, name. just want to she, say the whole thing is is a sad situation. We feel bad for the family. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So you were on saw you for Sina and you met this young lady. And I just want to tell her if I'm referring to her as the girl right now, and if she hears me, I'm only saying that because I can't say your name. But I still want to say your name, and I still want to call you Habibti, and I I will get the and I, and I will get to that at some point. But I, 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 met, I met a few girls before her. We went on Zoom calls. We went on, you know, online Zoom dates, but just didn't work out. So and met, then December her. comes. Okay. December comes. My mom and my dad are separated. My dad is in Lebanon. Um, I, he doesn't speak to me. He disowned me, disowned my mom, disowned my brother. And my mom now has a boyfriend. So I have to leave the dorm because of winter break. And I call my mom and I say, take me to your house. I need to stay there for a few weeks, two, two, three weeks, because the semester ended. She tells me, no, you're not allowed to come to my house. There, I have a boyfriend and you're going to say something wrong in front of him and it's going to throw him off and you're going to ruin my life just like your father ruined my life. So no. So she kicked me out of her house and I went to, I went to her friend's house. And as I went to her friend's house, I lived the worst days of my life. I was literally cleaning his toilet because he said, if you don't clean in my house, I'm going to kick you out. Okay, so... And then I go back to my mom after he kicked me out. I had no other choice. And then I matched with her. And then I started talking to her. And... No, I see it's hard for you to talk about it. <laughs> so what we're going to do right now, and uh, we're looking at, and we're going to get to it in just a little bit. We're speaking to Elia uh, Hawila, who was born Muslim. He's, he, when he came to the United States. I'm he, not, I'm not Muslim. No, but you were born into a Muslim family. You are. Yes. You know, and you were of the Muslim religion, so now you want to be part of the Jewish religion. We'll talk about how you dated and married a young Syrian Jewish girl, and then they discovered that you weren't Jewish and what that's all about. When we come back, we continue our conversation, and we will take some of your phone calls. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Talk Line Network. Okay, we are back. Our guest is Elia Hawila. Uh, he married a Jewish girl. We'll talk about that in just a moment. He's from Lebanon, grew up in a Muslim family, and uh, he was vetted by the FBI and by the New York Police Department. We heard from uh, Deputy Commissioner, Deputy Inspector Richie Taylor before that uh, he's not involved with any of the, the groups in Lebanon, the terrorist groups, but he's here in the United States and he's talking his emotional story, how he wants to be Jewish, and he told people he was Jewish even though he wasn't. So let me go back to, to you, Elias. So uh, you started going on the date site, uh, saw you at Sinai, and at what point you talked, was it over the summer that you met uh, this young lady that you ended up marrying? No, um, we matched January 3rd, and then started talking January 5th on phones. Uh, we, had a, we had our first phone call at night, and she started asking me questions about myself, and, you know, I said, you know, if I have, if I'm ever, if I'm ever gonna have any shot with her, she, her, her, her profile. When I saw her profile on the dating website, I said, you know, this is the one. Everything about her is right. She even speaks Arabic. She speaks fluent Arabic, so she, me, and her would resonate on a similar level. 
And ev ev every word I wrote in my dating profile about what type of girl I'm looking for, she fit in that category. So I said, this is the one. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste it on myself. Okay. So, so, you, went, so you went out with her, and then a short period. Before of time. we 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 stopped. We we started talking. We, she, you know, I felt I felt felt a deep connection with her even even on the phone before before I went to see her. Now we matched January fifth. I was forced to live by my mom, and it was a horrible time. Um, before the semester started. So me and her started talking. She really liked me and I really liked her. Because you were in Texas and, and she is, was in Brooklyn. I was, yes, I, I was in Texas and she was in Brooklyn. So we started talking and I felt a really deep connection to her. A really deep, deep, deep connection. And I still feel it. So the semester starts and I went back to College Station, the university, to my dorm. And first thing I did, first few days, I got a ticket to fly to New York to come see her. So I flew to New York January. I think it was January 21st or 20th. I don't I don't remember clearly, but I no, I think it was January 20th and then I met her in person for the first time January 21st. And we even connected at a deeper deeper level when we met in person and then we went went on our first date. Remember, it was a very, very, very beautiful day. We went to, I think it was Izzy's. We went to Izzy's Barbecue in Crown Heights. And then after that, we went to Empire State Build. sorry, the Museum of Natural History. And then after the Museum of Natural History, we went to the Empire State Building, where we took, we took a lot of pictures together. I still look at them. And then we went to Talia's Steakhouse and then we went back. Uh, we dropped her off. The Uber dropped her off in Williamsburg because she, she had a shift in Williamsburg that night. And then I went to the Airbnb where I was staying. And then we went on another date to Pescada. And then we went, we took walks together. We met, we, we, just, we just clicked. And then I met the son of her rabbi. He is also a rabbi, and and his wife, the Rebbitzin, and they were very sweet, the sweetest people in the world. And them too. No one should ever point fingers at them. Point your fingers at me. But while you point your fingers at me, understand my pain. Understand where it's coming from. And I met them, and I told them the same same exact lies that I had told to my friends and to my rabbi in Texas. The same exact lies because and what I did you knew say? You I said that you were. What did you say? You were Sephardic. What? what I said. That? I said. I said. I said I was Sephardic, but my grandma from my mom's side is Ashkenazi. That's what I told them. And you also said you worked for the NSA. I did say at some point, but but I will explain why. I will I will explain the story. So, one more reason. And I should say that, and I, and this, the whole world should hear about this, that forced me to eat, to lie more and more in Brooklyn to them and, and, and to the girl is that the Syrian community does not accept converts. They don't. And if I were to convert, if I were to tell them I'm not Jewish and I want to convert, I would lose her and I would lose belonging to a community that I've, that, that just felt like home. The Flatbush community, the Flatbush Syrian community felt like home. The, the way I spoke to people, the way I clicked with people, I, I didn't want to lose it. And most importantly, I didn't want to lose her. So I lied to them. But you know what? When I told you I love Torah, when I told you I want to study, when I told you, when I told you I, I, I'm, I'm becoming religious, and when I told you I want to pray, I wasn't lying. And I still don't want to be taken away from Torah. I still don't want to be taken away from Hashem. I still don't want to be taken away from this. I suffered a lot. I suffered a lot ever. I've been, I've been subject to death threats in Lebanon. So I don't want to lose that. Okay. So no. So you're. So you're. I, so you, at some point, you, we're going to get to it that you want to convert and you're looking to find I, rabbis to convert. I, 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 I went back to Texas. And then she came over and visited me for Purim in Texas. And then she visited me again for Pesach. And on Pesach, 
<laughs> all of this and i'm still feeling a deep connection to this girl and i'm getting attached to her day day after day and i'm falling in love with her more and more and more <sighs> she comes to texas and we went gun shooting together and in texas when you go gun shooting it's it's easy to go gun shooting texas is literally the state of guns it's one of it's one of the most beautiful places for freedoms ever let me put that straight besides the point so we went gun shooting together and we had to show id so i pulled out my id which was not a which which was not a texas id but it was a passport card when you when you get your citizenship you can not just get the passport you can also apply for a passport card and she saw my legal name on the passport card which was not Aliyah. and then after the gun shooting session at night she confronted me about it and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Like in that, my, my heart almost stopped. I said, she saw it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. She's, she's going to leave me. She's, I'm, I'm going to lose her. She's the love of my life and I'm going to lose her. So I, I had to make something up. I said, you know what? This is, this is, this is an NSA ID and it's for a mission. And I, um, I work for the NSA. And what That's did the, it, literally the whole story about the NSA. And what did it say? Ali Hassan on the card? Yes. Okay, so she bought it at that point in time, and things progressed where you had the vort, the engagement in August tenth of this pay, of this year. So th things things progressed. I I I finished the semester at Texas A and M, and I moved to Brooklyn, and I think it was May twenty fifth when I moved to Brooklyn, and then within a week I found a job, and. I met really sweet families. There's a family that I know they're listening to me right now. They hosted me for every single Shabbat meal. And I love you guys so much. One of them, like one of the guys from this family, is a friend who recently got married. I want him to forgive me for lying. I even, I lied to them. I had to lie to everybody. I want him to forgive me. And I want him to know that he's still a dear friend to my heart. This family is still a dear family to my heart. I love you guys, all of you. And there's another family, an, another family as well. They, he has a, he has a brother in Houston who's a rabbi. I also love all of you guys. You're all you're all dear to my heart. So so I can't, and I know so that I, you, you ate and I, people called me that you ate in their homes and obviously you got around and you got married. What was it? A few weeks ago, correct? We got engaged. We in first August. we proposed. I proposed on a helicopter. We went on a beautiful hel helicopter ride, and then we had a beautiful engagement party. And I just want her to know that. I want everybody to know that every word I said to her in that video that went viral, every word I said in the engagement party, I, I, about how she made me feel like I was. I it was a new life. How how happy I was. Every word, every beautiful word I said about her. That she's she's she has the best me dot. She's a holy girl. All of these, I mean them. They came from the bottom of my heart. But at the same time, it pained me that I was lying about myself. So let me ask you a question. So you, so you loved her. You got married. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the other question. How did, when did they discover, how did they discover that you weren't Jewish? What, at what point after the marriage? So... A week, a week after the wedding, my wife's father took my last name. My wife's father and my wife's brother took my last name, and they started Googling people with this last name, on just doing Google searches and do, looking up people on Facebook until they got to my father, who lives in Lebanon, and they contacted him, and they found my mom's profile, Facebook profile. And things started unfolding from there. So they went crazy. I started, I, I, I wanted, I wanted to cover, I wanted to cover things up. So I started lying even more and more. I want, I literally legitimately started, I, I felt, oh my gosh, they're taking her away from me. She's the love of my life. I'm finally, I'm finally living a Jewish life and having a Jewish home and building a Jewish family. And I don't want that to, that to be taken away from me. I love this girl. With, I, I literally would give my life to this girl. That's how much I love her. That's how much I love her. And by the way, the and I, don't want I, to I spoke her. to so her. I started I, making things up. What kind of things did so you her make father, up? What did you say to the father when they confront you and say, hey, you're the not. Father, the, father, the father did not confront me. 
the father started going to people high in the community, rich people in the community, and telling them this is what's happening. And rumors started spreading, and stuff started going on WhatsApp pictures. There's this, I remember when they separated her away from me. She was praying Shacharit in the morning by her apartment. I was sleeping, and she was praying, and I heard bad, like, really, really strong knocks on the door. And her father was screaming. And she got really scared. So I picked up, I picked up my bag and left, left for a few hours. I was by the Colbert Field Park on Avenue L in East 17th, sitting there for a few hours. And she was texting me and telling me that she misses me and that she doesn't care what the world, what the whole world has to say. And she really loves me. And I, I hope she still loves me, and I want her to forgive me. But so let me let me, I, let me get. To I that. was I was sitting in the once just okay. please. I was sitting in I was sitting in the park, and then I came back home. And then when I came back home, she was with the Rabbitson, who told her that we can't let you stay with him anymore until he brings proof of Jewishness, proof proof of Yichus Beruha Yehadut. So. They took her away from me. They, she left. And they had told her father that she left. And I was struggling for a week, just trying to just make up something, anything, anything. Anything for for me to try to convince them that I'm Jewish because I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose the life that I, that, that, that I always wanted. And I'm stuck. This is the love of my. This is the love of my life that I'm losing. And I want to have a family. And I want to have a Jewish life. And I want to go study in the yeshiva in a teret. And I, I, I had I had the best time studying in a, in a teret in the summer. I'm studying Torah and I'm I'm, I'm keeping Shabbat. And I, now I know I'm not allowed to keep Shabbat. <laughs> but this is this is the life. This is the life that I always wanted. And I don't want to lose it. So I, I just started making up stuff, making up names and making up, making up things and making up and, and, and saying stories. So things happened and it got really intense. And I started, started seeing posts of me on Instagram and things that went viral. And you're talking about the that fact they up. said you were his bullet terrorist or you were a terrorist? I'm not. I'm not. I know I you're not, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, but this is what appeared on some of the posts. That's why the FBI yes, was yes, called. Yes, they were accusing And the NYPD is, was called. That's what I know. When the NYPD came, they told me, your father-in-law called us and said that you were a terrorist, so we had to come and investigate. That's what, that's what they told me. And, and like, this is... You, what, what yeshiva world did I'm going to say it is unethical because if you want to reach a met and I know I lied and now I can't lie anymore because if I lie anymore I'm going to die it's going to kill me from the inside and I feel so much comfort that I'm telling the truth finally but what yeshiva world did is unethical that they went and not just defamed my name but they defamed her name and the, the, the NYPD themselves they said you know what he said, you're a harmless kid. And if you want to file a harassment report, harassment defamation report against your father-in-law and against Yeshiva Ward, let us know. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. If I believe that I have a Jewish soul and I believe that I want to convert and I believe that I want to live a Jewish life, I can never, ever report any other Jew to the authorities. I can just hope that one day they will do tshuva and stop putting inflammatory titles and stop ruining people's lives and stop defaming their names. You should know that I did speak to your father-in-law who told me that he's nothing against Muslims and he's nothing against you personally. Um, so he just wanted me to convey that to you. But let me ask... I, yeah, go ahead. I, gonna... Again, he's, speak, he's telling you he has nothing against Muslims because he thinks I am Muslim. I am not Muslim. I am. I don't affiliate with, our, with that religion. I have a Jewish soul. So let me ask you this question. We're going to get to, to some phone calls in just a few moments. So let me ask you this. Did you think that you can get away with saying you're Jewish when you weren't? Did you really believe you can pull that off long term? I, 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 
all I was thinking about is I don't want to lose the love of my life and I don't want to lose what I'm living. I'm, I was living it moment by moment. Around the wedding time, and my friend was speaking to me yesterday before Shabbat. He said, Elia, I noticed you were getting very nervous and you started vaping CBD again before before the wedding I, because I knew I knew you were you were you were having. Now I understand why. All I was thinking about is I am gonna fight till the end because I don't want to lose her. I don't. I don't want to lose this life. I want. I, I know you don't want you don't want to lose her, um, but but do you know that you her cause pain? I know. And I will beg forgiveness to the pain I caused. I will beg forgiveness for the rest of my life, to her specifically. Because and I want her to. Mm -hmm. And I want and I, and I want to beg her. I want to beg her to forgive me, and I want to beg her to give me a second chance. But here's the problem, as you said earlier in the show. You know the Syrian. Jewish community is very strict. It goes back 70 years. They have an edict where under no circumstances will they take a convert uh, for marriage in the community. So even if you were to be converted tomorrow, the Syrian Jewish community does not accept converts in, that, in this context. You are aware of that? I am. So that, change, am. Cause that changes the pick picture because you'd like to get back together but it seems to be it's right now right now before i before i even get the right to say that i want to get back together all i want to do because i have no right to, to, to go back or tell her come be back with me now i first want to do the conversion but i want to also remind her that i love her and i want to remind her of all the beautiful moments we had with each other and all the emotions that we shared they were, they were true when i took care of her and she took care of me when i told her i would take a bullet for you and she told me i love you so much i i got attached to you i don't know what you did to me those were true feelings but besides the point i want to focus right now on a few things the most important thing is getting converted i am begging anybody who can give me a connection to any rabbi that would convert me, and I would prefer to get converted in Israel because there's nothing holier than to get than to get converted in Israel. I'm a Lebanese boy who grew up around the Muslim community in South Lebanon, and I'm coming out and saying I support Israel. I would literally put myself on the front lines to defend Israel with my life. And I want to live a Jewish life, and I have a Jewish soul, and I want to daven, and I want to learn Torah, and become a Talmud Chacham, and keep Shabbat, and keep kosher, and keep all the Chagim, and elevate everything around me with brachot. I don't want to eat one bite of unkosher food. I want to say a bracha to everything that I do. This is the life I want. This is the life I always wanted. There you have it. Now, before we break, we are going to break, but at the same time, you realize by this, not only did you lie to yourself, but you lied to this young lady. And you now the people that you ate by is one thing, but her life has been changed. And listen, it's very traumatic. I, and I feel bad for the, I feel bad. I understand your story, but I feel bad for her and her family too, because they thought they were marrying a Jewish individual. She thought she was marrying a Jewish man and she wasn't. So you can imagine you know, the shock to her and the family. You can, you can empathize with that. I, I, I understand the pain and, and I, I'm really sorry from the bottom of my heart. I know the word sorry is not good. Actions, actions count more than words. And I beg, I beg her and I beg her family to forgive me. And I want her father to know, I never meant to harm to your daughter. I really, truly loved your daughter from the bottom of my heart. And I still love her. And I still think of her as the best girl in the world. We're you El brought the best girl. We speak to Elia, and he's here with us right now. He's... Original name was Ali Hassan in Lebanon, but uh, right now he's uh, Elia Hawila. And uh, as you heard, he grew up in a Muslim family. He married a Jewish girl, but discovered he wasn't Jewish. And we're looking at the aftermath of that. When we come back right after these messages. Okay, we're taking your phone calls. Let's go to Long Branch, New Jersey. Gabe in Long Branch, your question for our guest. Go ahead, Gabe. Hey, how are you? Good. Um, so... Uh I know, uh, I, I know uh, we, uh, we heard the story over here. Uh, sounds pretty emotional. Um, seems like uh, 
he, um, you know, he, uh, he, he really says that he loves the Torah and he wants it, you know, to be a, to be a God fearing Jew. Um, but I mean, marrying, I mean, you know, lying to people about being Jewish or trying to get involved, I could see that being one thing, but I mean, marrying someone on a lie and, you know, ruining, um, this girl's life. I mean, um, that's totally against the Torah. I mean, I mean that, that's like the, the complete opposite of everything he said that he wanted to do. So, I mean, how could he, how could he pull through with that? I mean, I mean, how didn't he stand up for it if he really did believe in it? I'll let him respond to you. Go ahead. Did you hear the question? Yes. Eli, did you hear the question? I did not hear the question. The voice was uh, was low. I, I couldn't Okay, hear. so the, the question was, is that the Torah deals with honesty and straightforwardness, so how could you decide to build based on lies, basically speaking? He's a million percent right, and I'm not going to tell him he's wrong, but at the same time, you got to understand that I was coming from a lot of pain that I didn't want to lose friends, and I didn't want to lose, lose, lose the rabbis, and I didn't want to lose the love of my life, so it's... It's it's an it's an intense compilation of emotions that just just pushed me back from want from what I wanted to tell the truth but I couldn't. I was literally handcuffed. You gotta understand in the end I'm a human being. So even though I wanted to tell the truth, I couldn't. I just couldn't. And I know and, and it pains me. I, I if I believe that I have a Jewish soul, I wanna do tshuva, and I, I wanna from now on tell the truth. I don't want to tell anything but the truth. I'm tired of lying. I'm tired. It pained me so much, and I want to stop it. I, I, I can't do it anymore. Okay, thank you for your phone. We have a lot of calls. So I want to squeeze as many as we can. Aryeh and Flappers, you have to lower your radio. Go ahead, Aryeh and Flappers. Okay. Go ahead, your question. Yeah, yeah, you know, I look at things differently. Uh, the only Shiloh I have here is really... Uh, whether a get is required in this case, because I look at, uh, I, I, I'm going to call him Elijah, because soon Elijah the prophet's going to come, and the 70 year old decree of the Syrian community is going to be nullified, because I think this is a sin that it's nullified as of now. Um, that's the only thing that I see as trace in this picture, because I see him as fully Jewish. Uh, he lived the same life as Avram Avinu. He did never, never practiced any other religion, simply was born into another religion. Like Avram Avinu, he destroyed the idols in his midst, okay? He lived the same path, and also, was Rifka Imenu not Jewish? Was she, was she also not Jewish? She was from Avram's family, and Yitzchak took her right away and kashered her and made her Jewish. Okay. So I'm, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to let Ari. I'm going to let him respond to you. Go ahead. I didn't hear the question. I, uh, I'm so, you, so to sum up your question in ten seconds, what would it be? I would say he lived the same life as Amr of Avinu, and that's why they, they, they pushed him away when he sought to convert, because he was he's already Jewish in every sense of the word. But, he, but here in this case, I don't think, aside from the Reform Rambo, you didn't try anybody else to convert you, right? Uh, I didn't, because if, if, I, if I got the initial rejection, I felt like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, I didn't know any better. I promise you I didn't know any better. And until, until I got to the Chabad house in Texas... I figured that people were being accepted for for conversions. Anyway, thank you for it was too late. It was too late. Anyway, thank you for your phone call. So here's an email question from Yossi. Why didn't he attempt to convert to Judaism in general long before he started dating? He sounds highly intelligent and knowledgeable, so I'm sure he would know the ins and outs of conversion. The problem is that the rabbis who would have potentially converted him proves we now have certain reservations in light of what happened. Because I was afraid of being rejected because of where I come from. Hello, who is this? Hi, this is Kayla Marks. Where are you calling Kayla from? I'm calling from Boston. Okay, we're going to take a phone call from Kayla from Boston. <laughs> Kayla in Boston, your question for our guest. Go ahead, please. Okay, as the daughter of a convert, it pains me to hear him say... So, so you're a child of converts, so you, it pains what he's telling you. Okay. Yeah, and... So my mother went through the actual process, and it took a long time and a lot of work. So she said she, um, you went, so it was, listen, being com to convert to Judaism is not an easy matter because the rabbis try to discourage people from converting, but you have to go through the process. So your mother went through a long process. Exactly, and it's, it's disgusting to hear these words come out of the mouth of somebody who never went through the process and is trying to claim our identity on himself with no basis. So you empathize with, with what he's going through? 
I don't empathize with what he's going through. I think it's it's a shame that he is trying to tell everybody that he's Jewish when he never even went through the process. So, so you're saying because you know your mother went through a long process, he didn't go through the process, and say he's Jewish, he's he's cheating the system, so to speak. Exactly, and the reason I'm that let, we let, are let, so let, let him respond to you. We have a lot of calls, a lot of emails. So, a good question. I'm going to let him respond to you. Go ahead. I agree with you that what I did was was wrong, and the pain that I'm going through right now, I deserve it. I des I deserve the pain that I'm going through, and I wasn't it, in in my head. I wasn't I wasn't like, let me cheat the system. But when I felt rejected by a reform synagogue, I've I had it in me. I felt that I'm gonna get rejected by everybody else, even by the, by an Orthodox synagogue. Now, I don't know where your mom came from when she went through her conversion, but where I come from, I'm going to throw people off. If I say I came from Lebanon, if I say that I, 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 I grew up around a Muslim environment, I'm going to be thrown away. So I listen, if you don't em em sympathize with what I'm going through right now, I can't blame you. I deserve the pain that I'm going through. But at the same time, all I'm asking for is a... Okay, let's take yeah. some more phone calls. Let's go to Simon. Your question, uh, Simon in Queens. Go ahead. Your question for our guests. Yes. So my question is, Ev, um, let's say he, uh, he, he, he wants to come back a year. He wants to be McGuire, knowing that he would not go back to this woman again. Would he do it? Is he doing it for her or he's doing it the same Shemayim? Is he doing it for God and he wants to be McGuire Kalacha and he's very sincere. He sounds very sincere. And you know, I, I, everyone deserves a chance. And uh, my question is, if he's if he's doing it for her, or he's doing it. To, so good question. Uh, so Simon's asking, are you doing it for her, or are you doing it, you know, for other reasons? Because the fact is, in the Syrian Jewish community, you won't be accepted. So if you're not going to marry her, will you still convert to Judaism? That's the question. Yes, yes. I'll tell you something. Living Jewish is the only way I want to live, and it's the only way I know how to live. I don't know any other way. Right now, I'm in New York. I'm in upstate New York. I'm in an area with no Jews, and I'm going through a lot. I literally, I, 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 I bought a bottle. I went to ShopRite, and I got a bottle of Kedem, and I bought some gefilte fish, and I bought some kosher bread that I found, and I still did Kiddush on my own. And I still, and I still watched for Hamutzi, for, for the first Sudan, the second Sudan, for Sudash Lashit, and I still prayed. No tefillin. I didn't wrap tefillin. I don't want to put on tefillin anymore until I convert. And I want to live a Jewish life and no other life. This is how I want to live. This is everything that defines me. I don't know how to live any other way. And I don't want to live any other way. And I don't want to be taken away from Torah. And I don't want to be taken away from Hashem for any reason. Not for a girl. She, yes, yes, she's the girl I love. And she's the girl I still want. And I will fight for her. But I'm not convinced. Converting for her. I'm converting for myself because I want to live a Jewish life. Okay, that should answer your question. Okay, so let me, before we take the next phone call, let me just ask you, uh, here's an email question coming in. We're trying to disperse. Alta writes, I'm confused. If the Syrian community does not accept con converts, how do you go through an engagement or wedding with a single relative present? Again, you know, let's, the Syrian let's, community, yeah. the Syrian community did not know. I never said that I'm a convert. I told them I'm Jewish. Yeah, they, they, they didn't know you were a convert, so that answers that particular. I, I'm not a convert. I want to convert. All I want right now is to convert. I don't want anything else. I don't know how to live any other way. And I beg anybody who knows how to refer me to a rabbi in Israel that could help me convert. If people in Israel could hear me right now, I want, I love you guys. I love Israel with all my heart. And I want to come and I want to convert. Sarah writes, I feel for you because that's what a lie does. It goes very far, unfortunately. Pick yourself up, convert, repent, and settle down in the yeshiva for a while. You'll find happiness one day. You sound like a good person. Your response to Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. You're right. Okay, let's take some more phone calls. And uh, let's see a lot of people waiting for a long time. We'll squeeze in a couple more calls right now. Let's go to Jeff and Flatbush. Jeff and Flatbush, you're on the air. Go ahead, Jeff and Flatbush. Hi there. First of all, I'm disgusted 
that my taxpayer dollars were used to investigate, which is basically a spousal uh, type of family issue. It's basically a divorce kind of case that is handled civilly. And, I want, and I'll tell you why my taxpayer dollars were used by the NYP to investigate it, because the Syrian community, with their clout and pressure, which has its own detectives and its own security, and could have investigated this guy with due diligence a hundred times beforehand, chose to do this. No, but Hello? listen, hold on. They, 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 they hold on. The, use FB, it. They FB, use it. the FBI and the NYPD, anytime there's somebody makes a terrorism complaint, they have to investigate. Yeah, so if someone makes a terrorist uh, a, a complaint against Zeb Brenner, are they going to come? No, they won't. They came if because somebody the said, community... for, hold on, no, it's nothing to do with the Syrian community in the cloud. Let me tell you the facts. They if if you're detectives. going through a divorce case, hold on. If you're going through a divorce case and somebody says, my spouse hit me, the, the police will come and arrest you. Okay, they ask questions. That's the way it works in New York. If somebody says that somebody's a terrorist, they investigate. That's the way. It had nothing to do with clout in the serious community. Let, let, let me tell you, I'm involved in the legal field. I do divorce cases all the time, and I can tell you every single case says their spouse they hit them and abused them. Every, uh, that, that, it, it, it was, it, and now they changed the law. You can get divorced just by, uh, by signing off on it. But it used to be that we both agreement. You, you couldn't get divorced unless you claim spousal abuse. So everybody claims spousal abuse. This, this was until about three years ago, okay? So that was the norm here in New York in New York State. But that's number one. Number two is they could have done their due diligence in this community, in the Jewish community. Everyone is always lying about everyone's yichus. And, well, courtship lives are very common, period. And they should have done their due diligence and investigated it. This guy, yes, he's a liar. He got in too deep. He's a romantic, codependent, emotional guy, and he got in too deep. Yes, I'll I'll admit that. That that he's he's guilty you of that. Made, you made your point, but the, I, I no, made no, my, I'm not finished. I didn't finish hold on, but my. We have point. a lot of people. I, I, I appreciate. Have one more you, thing to say. I have one seconds. more thing to say. Ten seconds. I have one more th- okay, ten seconds. First of all, the Syrian community with this thing about non-Jews who convert. Lafia Allah are not allowed into their synagogues or amongst their crew there. Lafati Yosef tried to fight this for years. They wouldn't do this. Say there was a Jewish community that said, listen, we observe every single halach except one. We decide to eat pig because when Mashiach comes, we'll be able to eat pig. So now we're going to start eating pig. They'll be ostracized from the Jewish community at all. Now, I think the Syrian community should be ostracized. Cause right. that one- I, I appreciate your phone call, but they shouldn't be ostracized in this particular case. This is the rule that they have. And until the rule changes, uh, it's, it, it is what it is. And, and listen, they have to deal with intermarriage. And this, it's a strong rule. Again, in the other communities, we don't see this, and it doesn't happen. But uh, I wouldn't criticize them for it. Let's go to Sarah. Go ahead. Your question for our guest. Yes, I, I, first of all, I would like to say to Elliot that I really feel for him. And he's I'm very sincere and really uh, from the heart. And um, we should not have treated him ever like that and it's written Hafsim S. Hagel right and he really means to convert and sincere and I can see he reacted like any human being would react you're in love you want to get married so you lie a little bit it's not the end of the world it's the well, other well, side hold on. But, but you, you, you can lie but when you lie where it affects somebody's lives and you say to somebody I'm Jewish and that's where the problem lies because okay he if, was if blinded he, if, if, by if, love if, if, yeah but if you lie and you want to go to a Shabbos meal okay I can buy that, but when you when you're getting married and somebody puts yeah, a trust in you, yeah, but if he's originally a from Muslim, when he's originally a Muslim, he does not realize what's going on. It's their fault totally. It's the other side's fault. You have to investigate. You have to make your own homework before you marry anybody. Why in the world didn't they see his in- in-laws? They didn't see his fa- his parents where he's coming from. They didn't they know which village he came from. It's their fault. I, he had a very normal reaction. And he shouldn't feel bad, and he should be very proud of himself, and we should be very proud of him that he sincerely wants to convert. And it's written by Hassan Isagir, and, Sager, okay. and we should make it easy for him to convert if they fall totally. And, and if somebody wants they don't if accept, somebody help, they wants don't to help accept. him convert, then we're going to help him convert. But thank you for we literally out of time. We have lots of calls. The board is ablaze. Go ahead. You're on the air. Your question for our guest. Yes, I, just a comment. I, here's an Orthodox rabbi, and presumably he has experience in being Masadir Kedushin. He's just going to take his face value. The guy sounds Jewish to me, so let's marry him. So let me, let me, that's a good question. Let me ask you this question. So you were walked down the aisle by a Chabad rabbi, Rabbi Yossi Lezerovitz, and you had Rabbi Ezra Zafrani, Masar the Kedushin. Did anybody ask you please, if you were Jewish? Please do not say names. Okay, did they, did they ask you, did anybody ask you if you were Jewish? Yes. And you, did you have to provide any proof to them? Did they ask for documentation? Yes. And, and did you gave him documentation? 
The only thing I gave them was the family tree that I that I produced that I had made up with names. But again, no one in the in the Flatbush community or anywhere should point fingers at them. Point fingers at me. They were true chesed. They are true chesed, and they trusted me. And I gave them. I I told them a story that convinced them. Those people are people that you should look up to, not people that you should point fingers at. Point your fingers at me. And yes, they did ask me. And yes, I did produce that tree. And that tree did trick them. And that tree did did convince them. No, listen, I, I don't fault them because it's very hard to verify sometimes. And listen, and I spoke to Chabad rabbis and others say when people walk in for a bar mitzvah or other life cycle event, can you go and really ask them and, and ask them to prove that they're Jewish or they say they're Jewish? It's a difficult situation, so we can't blame them. Uh, but uh, but the fact is, though, some of them have criticized them for not doing that. But I agree with you; they should not be. And criti- do do not do not criticize them. Think highly of them. Okay, let's go to Alex in Brooklyn. Go ahead, Alex in Brooklyn. Go your quick question or comment. Can you go and really? Alex, Hello? you have to low. Yes, you have a quick question or comment. Go ahead. Yeah. So hi, uh, Aliyahu. I just. I, I wanted to say, I, I think I understand what you're going through. You had a strong connection with the Jewish community. And I guess it, as, uh, as, uh, as you were saying, you know, you, like, you start off with a lie saying, you know, I want to go to Shabbat, but then one lie, one lie kind of snowballs from one into another and into another. But I also was like a little bit confused about, about the NSA thing, because I'm, I'm hearing from some people that I know in, in Texas, and obviously because I'll, I'll respect their anonymity, uh, they were saying you were spreading the NSA lie well before you met the wife. Why would you need to lie about being in the NSA? Okay, so let me, let, let me just ask him to respond. He wants to know, but the NSA question, you, you espoused even before you met your life, you told people you were working for the NSA. Elio, did, did you hear my question? I got the caller's question. He no, said, I didn't that, hear the question. He, he said that you called, that you told people you were working for the NSA be, even before you met your wife. No, I did not. You did not do it. I said I'm interested in working for the NSA. Anyway, we're out but of time. never you, But you never said it. Anyway, we're out of time. So listen, I appreciate you coming on the air with us. I know it wasn't easy. I know that uh, it's something which... It was important to hear your side of the story, so I thank you for joining us, and we look for, we'll continue our conversation. We have a lot, a lot of response to you. So, Eliyahu, uh, thank you so much for being a Havila. Thank you for being part of our broadcast tonight. Thank you.